finished with this um, talk that I'm giving, I click stop, and it comes to a, a preview mode for me. At this time, um, I could play it, and you can somewhat hear that in the background that um, it's playing. But for me, what I can do at this point if I want to trim is I can click on this trimming link and then I can decide, you know, so, so maybe I knew that, um, you know, 30 seconds into it was where I actually wanted it to start. And so if I, if I go to that 30 second point and I click on this beginning trim button, it will, that part of it will be taken off, okay? And you might have to listen to it to, to, for it to be okay. In some cases, you may not care. I mean, you may start it and maybe somebody asks a question that doesn't pertain to the lecture, but you know, you're providing content to these students that they want to review before an exam, and they're, they're, gonna, they're going to understand that there was something that was discussed for two minutes prior to the start of the lecture that, that's on that. I'd do the same thing at the end. I'd go to the point where I decided uh, that I didn't, you know, wanted to stop. Let's say it was right here. Well, actually, let's say I do it when I have that. See how I go from having that on the screen to not having it on the screen? So I go right before I have it on the screen and trim that part there. So what we're seeing in between the two pink bars is what I've actually want to keep. And so I'd come down here and click Submit. And as soon as I click Submit, it'll tell, well, usually it's not going to tell me that I've uh, trimmed 50% of what I talked about, but in this case it's asking me if I'm sure I want to trim that much. Um, and so it's going to submit that. That is going off to the server now. And so now I can, once, once it's gone, it tells it's complete, um, and it'll tell me that I can go on. And so now I'm ready for part two. So I go to part two, and everything's already set up now. I know that it's all working. I click record, three, two, one. Uh, I was actually going on to the uh, athletics site now and talking about the athletics website. And so we've jumped to that, and we're already recording. So we're off and recording again. And when I'm finished, I'm going to come down to the bottom, click it, and um, stop. And did anybody notice? Uh, well, I, I put in that part two. Um, and so now we've got a second part. Something else is already in the checkout line at the, at the grocery store uh, waiting to get uh, finished uh, checking out so that when I get back to my office I'll have an email saying here this is this is finished I forgot something I forgot a step and so it won't if I submit it now it will go ahead and take place but what you'll get an, a message back at your office it'll say you didn't ever tell me how you wanted to do this and so you need to for me to finish this you'll need to select a profile so you could still do that when you got back to the office if you forgot. So I can fix it now since we caught it. I can fix it here. So I'll go back, take screencast.com, submit, and that one's off. Uh, you have to do it for each one because it, it's not sure that you want to keep using that same pro. Okay. And I think that's probably the case because there are times when there may be, an, like you, you want to, do something different with it, um, but maybe I forgot to give you a profile, you could still submit it without a profile and we could pick the profile later. But if you want to do something else with it, then you need to just talk to me and say, hey, I, I really want my content to be on iTunes U as well, and I'll give you a different profile. So YouTube would be a different one as well, and if it's a YouTube private account, then we'd, um, we'd, we'd set it up so that it would work that way. Um, what it would ha it would make you do that. We would say uh, in the profile that it's a user defined account, and it would it would tell you to tell it what the the uh, um, with YouTube uh, the one thing that you have a challenge with is there's a limit on the size of the file, so it's like 15 minutes. 
And so if you record longer than that, it won't, um, you won't be able to upload it to YouTube. So as long as you're, you know that going in, then if you wanted to load these to your own YouTube account, that would work. If you wanted to use YouTube but you didn't want to have to worry about that, um, we could work with you and give you uh, the university YouTube account, which wouldn't be as automatic. It would work a little different. But you, and then you'd be posting to the university's YouTube account instead of your own YouTube account. So there's, that's, again, something to discuss. There's lots of options for where these um, files could be delivered. We'll come from Instructional Technology Services. Okay, so here's what the email will look like. So it comes back and it's from uh, Instructional Technology Services sent it to you. And it'll say presentation published, and I called mine testing Camtasia. Okay, and so here's what I'm seeing, and I, I uh, presentation was recorded, and I didn't include a description, so it's not there. It tells me it was 47 seconds long, and right here is the link. Okay, and so what you would do at this point is you would right click on that link. Okay, so you see view right here, this little link here. Right click on that link and copy link. It's going to tell you something. Copy your browser will say something. Can somebody check on the, on the Windows side and tell me what it uh, says if they look at their email? Uh, it'll say something like copy um, hyperlink or something. But, but copy link location. You'll get a message like that. And then you can go to Blackboard. And once you're in Blackboard and in your course, you can go to a content area. And any con a content area is one that has these menus, create item, build, evaluate those. those any of those um, are content areas. And in this case, what I would say is build. And I would tell it to create an external link. OK? I'd say build, create external link. And here I would put in the name of the lecture that I have. It's still loading. Okay, so I'd put in, so I'm just going to say this was called lecture one. And then you would paste in the URL. So remember in my email um, over here, I right clicked on that and I copied this link location. And then I'm in Blackboard now. I paste that. So here's this big long uh, URL. And before submitting it, the one setting change that I would recommend you make is open in a new window. Okay? If you choose that and submit, and then if we played this here, it's there's our, our content for us once it starts going. And then the nice thing about this is uh, if you are actually using a PowerPoint, it'll, uh, it can keep track of your slides for you when you're going through. It can chunk your content a little bit by slide.